On July 30th, 1944, in Normandy, a unit of the 6th Guards Tank Brigade, equipped with Churchill tanks, became isolated from their infantry. Developed for even the most rugged of terrains, these tanks had already proved their resilience time and time again, from Dieppe to North Africa to Italy. They moved through the dense countryside, lone and vulnerable, unaware that the newest track weapon of the German army lay in wait. Three Jagdpanthers, each armed with a formidable 88mm gun, were on the prowl. Developed just in time for the Normandy operations, these menacing machines had received the Fuhrer's personal seal of approval. Hidden, the Jagdpanthers prepared to ambush the Churchill tanks, ready to prove that while the invasion of northern France was well underway, Germany would not back down just yet. With this, the landscape near Saint-Martin-de-Bois witnessed the most concentrated infantry tank action in the entire war. The British Army's experience gained through World War I demonstrated a need for armored tanks capable of crossing trenches and broken ground. This led to the concept of the infantry tank, a vehicle designed to work in conjunction with soldiers capable of enduring heavy fire while moving at a relatively slow walking pace. As a potential German invasion loomed closer than ever, to bolster their defenses, the British hurriedly developed their newest infantry tank, the Churchill. Expecting that war in Europe would be similar to the previous conflict, Churchill, named after the Prime Minister who promoted the development of such vehicles years before, emphasized the ability to cross trenches in rough terrain. The first drafts and prototypes of this design were seemingly good enough, but the incredibly rapid pace and destruction of the German Blitzkrieg and the fall of France in 1940 led to a thorough re-evaluation. The new and improved Churchill was renowned for its exceptionally thick armor, one of the heaviest among Allied tanks, providing substantial protection against anti-tank weaponry. Added to this was its unique suspension system, which allowed the nearly 40-ton vehicle and its five-person crew to navigate complex landscapes, all while driving relatively slowly, at a maximum of 12 miles per hour. Soon enough, the British Army's newest tank was ready for combat. In mid-August 1943, a strong force of about 6,000 troops, primarily inexperienced Canadian men, was sent to the French port of Dieppe to test the feasibility of opposed landings. For this, 60 of the newly developed Churchill tanks from the 14th Army Tank Regiment were assigned to support the infantry, with the vehicles expected to reach the town and a nearby airfield before retreating for extraction. But not long after the start of the Dieppe raid, they faced unexpected challenges, beginning with the landing beach's composition, whose large rocks hindered the movement of the tank. Of the 30 Churchills that landed under heavy fire, only 15 reached Dieppe's promenade. Once there, concrete defenses and the absence of engineer demolition teams further restricted the vehicle's progress. In the end, only 10 Churchills returned to the beach for withdrawal, but they couldn't be evacuated, and the raid was a massive failure. Despite this, even the Germans were surprised at the feat, as the beach at Dieppe port had previously been believed uncrossable by any sort of vehicle. Following this, two earlier models equipped with the original two-pounder gun and six of the newest iterations with a more powerful six-pounder were sent to North Africa to train with Major Norris King and form the Special Tank Squadron, also known as King Force. At the Second Battle of El Alamein, the powerful King Force supported most of the primary attacks. While the fight across North Africa gave the Churchills a chance to prove their worth, where they provided much-needed protection with their armor, even the more powerfully armed models showed inadequate firepower. At El Alamein, a much-needed victory in the African theater, the Churchill tank was a crucial participant in an action that led to the capture of the newest German heavy tank, the Tiger I, which allowed Allied war planners a complete example from which to learn its strengths and weaknesses. In 1943, in Italy, Churchills easily traversed the rugged terrain, like the steep hills and ravines common in the Italian landscape. With its performance in the Italian campaign, helping restore faith in the less-than-perfect tank's capabilities, the vehicle was then pressed into further service as the march toward Rome continued, becoming a component of the British and Commonwealth armor pushed to the north. As the mainstay of the tank brigades operating in support of the infantry, the Churchill was a more common sight at the front lines than other models. With the D-Day landings at Normandy nearing closer than ever, the Churchill tank was also sent to France in the late spring of 1944. 
Simultaneously, Germany's newest tank was also being sent there for its first ever mission. After facing off against Soviet tanks like the T-34 and KV-1 in Operation Barbarossa, German war planners realized that their Pak-36 tanks were inferior in armor and firepower. But despite knowing about this major gap in their defenses, as 1942 came to an end, Germany was facing economic and industrial problems. Engineers had no choice but to combine existing designs to Frankenstein their way into a powerful yet cost-effective tank. The result was the Jagdpanther, which combined the Panther tank's reliable chassis with the 88mm gun of the Pak-43. This powerful weapon was, at the time, one of the most powerful anti-tank guns, particularly effective at long ranges and capable of penetrating the armor of any Allied tank that approached it. In addition, this Hunter vehicle also featured thick, sloped armor for enhanced protection, a low profile for better concealment, and a powerful engine. After the full-size model was demonstrated before Hitler in October 1943, the Fuhrer greenlit the production, which began a few months later in January. At the same time the Allies were landing in Normandy, the first copies of the Jagdpanther were deployed in early June 1944, ready for combat in northern France. On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces heroically and successfully stormed the beaches of Normandy. Some of the first armored vehicles to land in the area in support of the invasion were the Churchill tanks, smashing through some of the fiercest German coastal defense units in the company of infantry units. But while D-Day marked the beginning of the liberation of Western Europe from Nazi occupation, what followed was not a rapid advance to Paris, but rather a difficult and costly uphill battle. For more than six weeks, American, British, Polish, and other forces slowly advanced through the northern French terrain. But said terrain, characterized by dense woods, small ancient towns, and hedgerows, greatly favored defenders, as it was ideal for ambush operations. This, in addition to the hundreds of mines in the area, slowed their progress. This advance became even more difficult after well-rested and well-equipped German reinforcements arrived in the area. The Germans were not ready to give up. But neither were the Allies. And so, to try to break out of Normandy, the Allies launched a series of operations in mid and late July. On the British sector, the latest move was Operation Bluecoat, set on capturing the strategically important Hill 309 on the Comment le Vent Ridge from the German 326th Infantry Division and effect the capture of a road junction in Vire, specifically important as it would disrupt German lines of communication and hinder their ability to move reinforcements. Bluecoat was the eastern complement of the American-led Operation Cobra. This similar operation focused on the western part of the front, with both operations collectively facilitating a significant breakout from the Normandy beachhead. On July 20th, the British Army's 6th Guards Tank Brigade, made up of Churchill tanks, landed over Gold and Juno beaches, ready for their first action in the precursing moves of Operation Bluecoat. While the first few days of operations proceeded smoothly, with the Churchills covering six miles of terrain that would have stopped any other tank, the heavy Bocage terrain soon raised a significant tactical challenge. The synergy between tanks and infantry is crucial in military operations, especially in complex terrains like Normandy. But the tanks, with their greater speed and mobility, advanced faster than the accompanying foot soldiers, who were slowed by physical obstacles and sporadic enemy engagements. This disconnect led to a loss of coordination. Without infantry support, tanks became more vulnerable to enemy anti-tank measures and ambushes, lacking the close-range protection infantry could provide against such threats. As a result, the Sixth Guards Armored Brigade lost touch and were cut off from the soldiers they were meant to support. No one knew where they were. When one of these squadrons ended well ahead of the rest, they unknowingly came head-to-head -head with a fearsome new enemy. On July 30th, the first official day of Operation Bluecoat, in the dense underbrush near saint martin de bois a dangerous surprise awaited the incommunicated Churchills, three hulking Yuckpanther tank hunters concealed in the foliage, waiting for their prey. As the unsuspecting squadron of British Churchill tanks rumbled through the terrain, the quiet was shattered by the deafening roar of the Yuckpanther's powerful 88mm cannons. 
Fire and smoke erupted as the shells tore through the air, quickly finding their targets and marking the first ever attacks of this newly developed vehicle. What followed were two minutes of a chaotic scene, with German tank destroyers exploiting their superior firepower and strategic positioning, dominating the skirmish as the Churchill tanks scrambled to respond. By the time the encounter ended, only three Jagdpanthers and their powerful guns had taken down 11 Churchills. Despite their strong armor, they were simply too close and underarmed to defend against the Germans, and the short, fierce battle became the war's most concentrated infantry tank action. When an additional squadron of Churchills rushed in to help the beleaguered forces, the Jagdpanther operators had to abandon their new vehicles because of track damage and lack of support. Despite the losses, a silver lining emerged when the Six Guards Tank Brigade captured two Jagdpanthers. While brief, this encounter showed the strength of the new tank destroyer and cemented its reputation as a massive threat to any Allied tank or soldier it encountered. The operation resulted in a significant breakthrough, and the British forces captured several important towns and strategic points, including the critically essential town of Viev, disrupting enemy lines of communication and supply. Operation Bluecoat relieved pressure on American forces in the West, particularly following their breakthrough in Operation Cobra, and both contributed to the overall weakening of the German defensive capability in the region. Despite its many faults, the Churchill was a key to the British fighting of World War II, and was a big contributor to the Allied victory that brought an end to the war in Europe. A total of 7,368 Churchill tanks served the British for a little over 10 years, in many different marks and variants. While the Churchill tank remained in service after the war, by then, it was being slowly replaced by more modern designs, like the Centurion tank. Still, the Churchill saw action in the 1950 Korean War, where, just like years before, its strong armor and good climbing ability were advantageous in the rugged region. On the other hand, while one of the war's most powerful vehicles, the Jagdpanther entered the conflict too late to make a significant strategic difference. The Hunter tank still fought in key battles, including the Ardennes Offensive, the defense of Germany, and engagements during the retreat from Soviet forces. In the end, its impact was limited by production issues, mechanical challenges, and the Allied forces' overwhelming numerical and tactical superiority. But despite only 392 units built between January 1944 and March 1945, the Jagdpanzer was undoubtedly one of the most successful German tank fighters in all of World War II.